good time. It's really nice, you know, like, I mean, we thought... Summer camp. Yeah, it is. It's very yeah. All the bands are really cool, you know, like, we kind of thought before we come out, it was going to be a bit daunting that we wouldn't know anybody, and, you know, because, the, I mean, we're English, very China Scottish, and everybody else is American, and it was like, they were sort of quite a rock orientated bill that we wouldn't fit in, but it's been going really brilliant. Everybody's really friendly. We're having, like, a really brilliant time, and it's good finishing at, like, at two o'clock. And then being able to enjoy yourself for the rest of the day, you know, we just get a lot of time to hang out. Perry Farrell described you as the band to, uh, what was it, to tame the savage beast, isn't that what he said? Do you feel that that's really your role? I mean, in terms of, like, not taming the savage beast, perhaps, but do you understand the logistics of the lineup in that sense? Yeah, I suppose so. I mean, I think if the, if the lineup was, like, all the same sort of bands, it would be a bit pointless, really. We're, there we are, uh, coming on to tame the savage beast, and then the beast gets savage again. Yeah. I think that's why like, Dollar Blues is all about variety, not just having the same kind of band. So I think it's good that you've got like a mix too, you know, like and we're, we're not sort of your archetypal rock band, we're more sort of quite nice. Press in 1989, you became the uh, instant darlings of the British press, which can be a really pr a problem. It can be horrible because what they do is they put you up on a pedestal, which they eventually have to knock you off. Are you getting any backlash now? Is that happening with the uh, album now that it's out and, and you've gone through the darling stage? Are you getting that uh, backlash of criticism? Is that happening at all? Well, we had it, you know. The album came out at the beginning of the year and then we got our sort of backlash. Come up and so it all happened. But then we just went on. We've been on tour ever since like the end of January, so we've been away. So I think they've sort of forgiven us again. We're back in favour. We've become dinosaurs. Yeah. <laughs> But comfortable dinosaur. What does that say to you about the press? That it's fickle? That it's oh, they're so fickle. Ooh. Like a faithless lover. Oh. <laughs> now they are. They were, they're an outfit, though. I mean, the British music press, especially like, because there's no like radio play. You don't get any ra radio play, so people it hear about our kind of bands through the press, you know, and so the press is very influential in making up people's minds for them, you know, so you can break a band, you, someone can think, oh, I'll go and see such and such a band, I've never heard them, but I've read really good things That's about them in the paper, so they can, like, really, you know... It's a different, I mean, here, like, music press monitors bands, you know, and it just comments on what's already there, like, in England, the music press are, like, a bunch of A&R men, you know, they're just, like, out to find the next big thing and, like, put it on the cover before anyone else gets there. So which is why you get that kind of darlings of the press thing and then oh we put our money in the wrong set of horse you know like oh no forget that one next 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 you know. confidence in what we're doing and it's it's not that we've become like hugely confident and we're now so proficient at what we do it's just that we've got to the level where most people start off at you know we think oh okay, actually we're all right you know we're doing all right but life used to be a bit of a disaster initially now it's fun now we actually enjoy it rather than just panic constantly about it but when you say that when you say that we couldn't play we couldn't sing and yet we became so instantly successful I mean, if I was listening to that and I was somebody who was trying to break into it, that would really piss me off, you know? What is it about you that made it happen? I think it's, I think it's the ideas, you know, there was obviously, you know, we weren't like confident about like, going on stage and strutting our stuff, but I think maybe people who thought it was alright, it was because the ideas were there and you could see that it wasn't like... I, I, I mean, the thing is that we did get picked up too early by the British press, so we didn't really have enough time to evolve to a point where we did feel confident about going and say, so, we, you know, like it's been said like loads of times before, it's like we grew up in public really, you know, and now we've got to the stage that we feel quite good about what we do, you know. So I think before that it was like... We had the ideas but not the execution, yeah, I yeah. think. Yeah, and I think the records were really good, you know, the records were good, but it wasn't, you know, 
it was more the, the thing on stage, it's all the stuff in front of, you know, whether it's sort of 500 Five people, people or, yeah, or yeah. sort of, you know, like, getting a crowd like this, you know, it was like, we weren't really ready for that, but now we are, you know. Yeah, L O L A P O L A L no L O L O L L A P A L O O Z A. Harry Farrell awoke from a dream and said Lollapalooza, and the rest is youth culture history. Now. Perry's idea of a big traveling circus of alternative culture kind of gave way to commercial pressures after a couple of years, but it was a true gathering of the tribes, complete with splinter factions. And over the years, there were some Lollapalooza mainstays, things you'd always see, the mosh pit, the body piercings, the info booth, and of course, the rabid fans <laughs> rushing to the front. The thing about this Lollapalooza is anything could happen. Oh, there's like 11 buses, 23 trucks. It's a circus. It really is a How circus. How many people total on the, on the road? About 300. Have you played the Peppers recently? Uh, we haven't got much time. They, they usually show up late. See, we're, we're here all day. But, you know, they, those guys come in and they just, you know, kind of, no, no, I, they're, they're, um, they're probably practicing right now getting ready for the big match. The bottom line is music, obviously, because, like you said, we're not politicians. We express ourselves musically, not politically. The whole ball of wax is still cool. I mean, we're into everything, you know. I mean, everything that this festival stands for, all the things that are going on. We're lobbying for the legal re-legalization, re-industrialization of hemp. Everything you see on this table here is illegal in Canada under Section 462.2 of the Criminal Code. How political is Lollapalooza? It's very political, but it's on, it's on a unity tip. Uh -huh. it's, it's getting people exposed to, to, you know, what I'm like, and it's exposing me to what other people are like, and we got some, some fans from overseas there. This must be a trip for you. Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. You see that pit going, everybody going crazy, you know, loving it. I know some of y'all can't play this. Bitch, my niggas are the craziest here. So you and your boys are ass what? When I'm rolling in a seven-deuce grass house. The mob ain't nothing but a finish when we get the mother... I think rock concerts in general need something more than they used to have and people are looking for it. So hopefully, hopefully a whole bunch of weird ideas will come up and happen. I'm just into weird ideas, not consciousness. And Types of bonds all getting together is what it's all about. agenda of Lollapalooza had to do with you wanting to be here? The political agenda? Um, not that much, really. I mean, you know, we're musicians, not politicians. Obviously, we care about the world and the environment and people and uh, people getting, you know, proper medical treatment and, and education and stuff like that. But it would be it would be ridiculous for me to say that I like spend a lot of time thinking about politics because that's such a, a, a negative entity to me that um, you know, it would be kind of a distraction from my creative time. <laughs> The whole 
ball of wax is still cool. I mean, we're into everything, you know. I mean, everything that this festival stands for, all the things that are going on. I mean, AIDS awareness and, you know, uh, smashing Bush in the head with a hammer thing and all that. You know, that's Wake cool. up, Mr. President. Yeah, well, I mean, I'd rather, like, have the game where we actually get Mr. Bush and tie him up and all pee on him. But uh, for now, we'll just have to play the Wake Up Mr. President.